Hi there, I'm Brandon from Basic Wisdom. I tutor and help people from all walks of life pass FINRA and NASAA exams. If you'd like to learn more, go to my website, which is basicwisdom.net. Now, I know I don't have the time to tutor everyone, so I've partnered with Achievable to offer a great course available to everybody. It combines their app, which comes with the best personalized learning technology available in the market today, with my knowledge, expertise, and teaching style all together as one affordable product. If you want to learn more, go to achievable.me or click the link below this video. All right, let's talk some finance. The question of the day, what is an option? To understand what the heck is going on in this world, we need to understand what it is we're actually dealing with. Now, an option is just a contract between two different parties. And the good news is that there's only two types of contracts that we really need to keep mind of. There are calls and there are puts. We will talk about both, but let's start with calls first. To keep it as simple as possible, a call contract gives the owner the right to buy at a fixed price. That might sound a little confusing, but a call contract is really no different than a coupon. For example, Let's say a grocery store puts out a coupon, and that coupon lets people buy a bag of fruit for five bucks. If you were to find that coupon and you were the owner of that coupon, you would have the right to buy a bag of fruit for five bucks. You go to the store, you grab your bag of fruit, you bring it to the cashier and start paying for your purchase. Now, let's think about the store's perspective. They put out a coupon that gives their shoppers the right to buy fruit for five bucks, they have the obligation to sell that fruit for $5. Now, even though the shopper does have the right to buy fruit at $5, and the store has the obligation to sell that fruit for $5, the coupon itself is still a contract, in a way, that gives the right to buy. Now, let's think through a couple extra things here. The more expensive that bag of fruit is normally, the more valuable that coupon is. For example, if the bag of fruit is normally $6 and you're saving a dollar, yeah, it's a pretty valuable coupon. But if that bag of fruit is normally $20 and you're saving 15, that coupon is a lot more valuable in that situation. The more expensive that bag of fruit is in the market, the better that coupon is. But it could also go the other way. If the bag of fruit is normally $4, then our coupon's kind of worthless, right? In fact, it actually would lose us money if we used it. So we would only use our coupon if it actually saved us money in the end. Otherwise, we would just let it expire worthless. Now, if you understand all of that, then you can definitely understand what a call option is because it's basically the same exact thing except we're dealing with stock instead of fruit. Calls give the owner the right to buy stock at a fixed price. As an example, let's say that we have a Ford 15 call. That call would give us the right to buy Ford stock at $15 a share. If Ford stock was trading in the market at $20 a share, then our call contract has value and we definitely would want to use it. And if we used it, we'd be able to buy the stock for $5 less than what it's actually trading for in the market. On the flip side though, if Ford is trading for $10 a share, then our 15 call is worthless. In fact, if we used it, we would be losing money or overpaying for something. There's a lot more associated with calls, and we'll get into that in a future video, but for right now, it's important to understand that fundamental piece. A call option is something that might give the owner the right to buy stock at a lower price than what the market's offering at. Let's go ahead and switch over to puts. Puts are very similar but there's one big distinct difference. Instead of giving the owner the right to buy stock, puts give the owner the right to sell stock at a fixed price. Let's stick with coupons for puts, but we're gonna have to change a few things. Instead of a grocery store, let's say that we're talking about a place like Buffalo Exchange or Plato's Closet. You know those places that you can take your used clothes to and you can sell it to them? Let's say that Buffalo Exchange puts out a coupon and that coupon lets whoever comes into their store sell them any pair of jeans 
for $25. Now, if you clip that coupon and bring it into the store, you have the right to sell jeans for $25. On the other end, Buffalo Exchange has the obligation to buy those jeans from you for $25. Now, even though the shopper has the right to sell and the store has the obligation to buy, if we think about what the coupon is, the coupon is still something that gives the right to sell jeans at 25 bucks. Let's think through some scenarios in this example. From the shopper's perspective, the best possible scenario you can get into is just, hey, maybe you find a, a pair of jeans on the side of the street. So you, fi you find some free jeans. You take those free jeans into Buffalo Exchange and you sell them for 25 bucks. By doing that, you effectively have made $25 for free. Now, if the only jeans you have are jeans that you bought for 100 bucks, then maybe bringing them into the store and selling them for 25 is not such a great deal. And in that case, you might have a worthless coupon in front of you. Put options are exactly the same, except we're dealing with stock. Let's assume that we have a Ford 15 put, which would give the owner of that put the right to sell Ford stock for $15 a share. From the owner's perspective, the, the cheaper that Ford stock is in the market, the more profit they can make. For instance, if Ford stock is out there trading for $5 a share, then the owner of the put could go to the market, buy the shares for $5, and then exercise their put and sell those shares for $15, making a $10 profit by doing that. Now, on the other hand, if Ford stock is out there trading for $20 a share, then the put is kind of worthless, right? Why would you use the put and sell your shares for 15 when you can just go to the market and sell them for 20? In that case, the owner would never use the put and they would just let it expire worthless. This is just the start on our options conversation. And yes, we have a lot more to go through, but if you understand these fundamental pieces of options, then you can no doubt learn everything you need to know for the exam. Bottom line, an option is just a contract between two different parties to buy or sell something at a fixed price. We will definitely dive further into the specifics in future videos, but if you understand this, you're off to a great start.